the Fitzroy Range. It's the most beautiful sight landscape in Argentina. You have to make the effort to see this landscape because it is a once in a lifetime experience. Something that is absolutely different to any other mountains you can see around. Welcome everybody. I am Julian. I am very happy to have this opportunity to share this part of the world with so many people from other places. I am very, very lucky because this part of the world that I have to share is one of the most amazing parts of the world. And that, that makes me very happy because it's something really worth showing, you know. Let's go on with the presentation. I will talk a little bit about Argentina and especially Patagonia region, which is the southernmost region of Argentina. So this is me. I am a mountain guide certified by the local Argentinian Mountain Guides Association and the WIMLA. I am also an IFMGA aspirant. If everything goes well, I'm finishing my IFMGA course this year. I've been guiding and working in the mountains since 2008, which is a lot. <laughs> I started guiding and, and working in outdoors when I was 22 or 21. But I've been climbing and skiing and mountaineering all my life since I was a kid and since I was born here in, in Patagonia. I want to tell you that I'm very thankful to 57 Hours because it is quite an opportunity to link me with clients all around the world. And I see 57 Hours as a window through which you can see us in these very far places from the places where you live. And it is a, a nice thing to find an agency like 57 Hours that will to connect people. I often feel that people have much richer experiences when they connect directly with us and they are willing to see the place and also feel it through someone that is local. And we've been working together for the last three years, writing some articles, doing some webinars like this one, and also guiding adventures in the north and the south of Patagonia region. So this is the presentation that I will cover today. I will give you a general overview on Argentina. Then we will talk especially about Patagonia and Los Glaciares National Park, which is the national park where Mount Fitzroy is. Then we will talk especially about El Chalten Town, which is the base for Fitzroy and Cerro Torre hikes. We will talk a little bit about the logistics for a hike like this. To begin with, when you travel to Argentina, you're traveling to South America, which is a very interesting part of the world where Spanish is the main language and there are lots of different kinds of people living in different kinds of countries. Almost all the countries in South America, let's say all except for Brazil, are a native Spanish speakers. But in Argentina, we have a very good level of English and lots of people speak English, so it is pretty easy to communicate while traveling. Once you travel to Argentina, you will probably fly into Buenos Aires, which is our capital. It is a huge city with many millions of inhabitants and very interesting cultural aspect of our country to show. What we want to, you to see on this slide is the amount of space we have in Argentina. Argentina is a country with 5,000 kilometer long, in some parts 2,000 kilometer wide. So today we will be talking about El Chalten, which is a town that is almost 2,400 kilometers far from Buenos Aires. So once you fly into Buenos Aires, probably if you want to hike with us, you will have to fly again a two-hour to three-hour flight to Patagonia. In this slide, we can see some of the highlights on Argenti in Argentina, except from Buenos Aires. We have to name Iguazu Falls in the northeast part of Argentina, near the border between Brazil and Paraguay and Argentina, which are one of the biggest falls in the world. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Natural Marvel. And also in the western part of Argentina, we have Mount Aconcagua. Aconcagua Mountain is a 7,000 meter peak. It is the highest mountain outside the Himalayas. And lots of people come to Argentina just for climbing this mountain. It is a huge mountain with a very, very interesting a normal route that is not very 
difficult in technical terms, but it is very high above the sea level, so it can be very committing. And then in the southern part of Argentina, we have Patagonia. Patagonia is a region that is almost half of Argentina, and in the south of Patagonia, we have El Chalten town, which is where Mount Fitzroy is, and Ushuaia, in the southernmost tip of the continent, that is the southernmost city in the world. It is closer to Antarctica than it is to our capital. So this is a picture of Buenos Aires. This is like the center of the city. And it is a very beautiful city with a lot of French heritage brought by the first pioneers that came from Europe. We have a lot of Italians, Spanish and French and also British immigrants coming during different immigration waves. So there are many things that are very, very similar to Europe in Buenos Aires, not only in our customs, but also in, in the architecture and the way the city is shaped. But also at the same time, Buenos Aires is very different to the rest of Argentina. You know, it is absolutely different and it is something very important for you to know that if you come to Argentina, you really need to travel to other parts of the country more than Buenos Aires. Because if not, you will be seeing just a little part that is especially similar to Europe probably and it is not like our full culture, you know. In Buenos Aires, you can find something that is very well known around the world that is tango. Tango is a music and a dance that is, it is no longer popular amongst Argentinians, really, but it is something that we still have around because it is something cultural, something local from the beginning of the 19th century. But also we have this gaucho culture, like here on a, on a picture on the right side of your screen. The gaucho culture is like the main culture of the inside parts of Argentina in the countryside. This slide is meant to show how we have these two cultures coexisting in our country. The urban tango culture in, in Buenos Aires and then the gaucho culture in the inside of our country. This is some of the gauchos. The gauchos is the local name for the cowboys. This is some of the gauchos dancing and, and also lots of the things that we love to eat come from the gaucho culture. So this is mate. <laughs> this is something very, very important. If any of you have ever met an Argentinian, probably you've seen him having mate like I'm having right now. This is something that we can, we can skip. We can't live without. And it is just a drink like tea. But what is special about this drink is that we drink it in this pot with a straw and we usually sip from the straw and then pour water again and share it with someone else. This is the way we drink it. It is very interesting. And here you have our most famous football player, Leo Messi, on the right side of the screen having mate. He's Argentinian and he lives in Spain and he still has mate. Well, in Argentina, we also have a very, very important food culture, empanadas, which are these like cakes here. They are usually stuffed with meat. And we also love asado, the way we call a barbecue. Here on the right side, you can see a gaucho doing an asado, doing a barbecue. And we usually eat a lot of meat because we have a huge countryside. Imagine with, with a 5,000 kilometer long country, we have a lot of room for growing cattle and we have a lot of beef. And usually the main thing to eat in Argentina is beef. I don't want it to seem like this is the only thing, no? We also have a lot of pasta because we have a lot of Italian immigrants that brought pasta, pizza. We have a lot of different kinds of food, but beef here is a big thing. So this is a picture of Iwasu Falls, very important place I told you in the border between Paraguay, Brazil and Argentina in the northeast region of our country. It is a must also if you come to Argentina, visit this place. You can visit it in a one night trip from Buenos Aires and it is worth going there. It is very, very beautiful. And this is Mount Aconcagua, this 7,000 meter peak I told you, the highest mountain in America and also the highest mountain outside from the Himalayas. And here you have what for me is the most beautiful site landscape in Argentina, the Fitzroy Range. This is like the highlight of Patagonia. I really think it's the must if you come to Argentina, even to South America, to Chile or to Argentina, you have to make the effort to see this landscape because it is a once in a lifetime experience. It is a very beautiful, something that is absolutely different to any other mountains you can see around. This mountain here in the middle is Fitzroy. Then all the other towers, each one has its own name. Saint-Exupéry, Rafael, Juan Senot, Mermo, and Guillomet. 
but the highest one is Mount Fitzroy that is famous all over the world. To go on a little bit more, we will start talking about Los Glaciares National Park. Los Glaciares National Park is a national park that covers mainly these two lakes, Piedma Lake on the north and Argentino Lake on the south. This national park was meant to take care of all the glacial lands on the western side of Patagonia, on this region, where we have more than 70 glaciers flowing down from the Patagonic ice field. I don't know if you've heard about it, but the Patagonic ice field is a huge, huge glacial land that is shared between Argentina and Chile on the middle part of Patagonia. And it is unique because it is the third of continental ice in the world after Antarctica and Greenland. It is huge. It is 400 kilometers long and 80 kilometers wide. From this ice field, there are many, many glaciers flowing down to the east and to the west. The glaciers that flow down to the west usually enter the, the Pacific Ocean in Chile, and the glaciers flowing down to the east usually end in lakes like these ones. If you want to see the ice field, probably Argentina is the best option because the only way to see the ice field from Chile is to go by boat and you can only see the fjords coming down to the ocean. But from Argentina, we can enter the ice field by hiking or well, mainly hiking and, and see it. So these two lakes, the one on the south, Lago Argentino, the Argentino Lake in the south, in the lower part of this picture, has a city called El Calafate, where the main airport of the region is. And near this place, Calafate, we have Perito Moreno Glacier, which is a huge glacier that we will see some pictures in a while. And in the north part of Viedma Lake, we have El Chalten Town, that is 200 kilometers far from El Calafate. You can go by bus or by van from Calafate Airport to El Chalten. And that's where Cerro Torre and Mount Fitzroy are. If you travel to this part of the world and you come to Buenos Aires and then you fly into El Calafate, this is a place that you have to visit. Perito Moreno Glacier. Perito Moreno Glacier is 80 kilometers far from Calafate. It's a day trip. You can visit it through many different kind of excursions. There are many ways to, to visit the glacier, but mainly what you are going to see is this place. It is a very beautiful glacier, five kilometers wide, more than 20 kilometers long, and 140 meters tall, of which 70 meters are outside the water. So you can come to these balconies to see the glacier. Or you can also take trips by boats to see it from the lake. And also there is an experience that you can hire an experience of crossing by boat to the glacier and doing a glacial trek over it. Either one or the other way to do it, it's something that you should definitely do if you come to Argentina. When you travel 200 kilometers from Calafate in the south to El Chalten, you will arrive to this place here on the lower right part of the picture. This slide is aimed to show that very close to the to town, we have Mount Fitzroy on the left side and Cerro Torre on the left lower side. And also we have these places, Piedras Blancas Glacier, Piedras Blancas Viewpoint, Laguna de los Tres and Laguna Sucia. This is the area that we cover, that we, we usually hike through some trails that I will talk about in a little while. This is the way from Calafate to El Chalten. When you get closer to El Chalten, you will start seeing these kind of views if the weather allows you. Because, you know, something very important about Patagonia, we love saying that we have the world's worst weather. We can have all four seasons in a day. We can have a huge snowfalls even in the most sunniest day in summer. You can wake up with a nice sun and a blue sky, and in the afternoon, it can be snowing. Everything in Patagonia is dependent on weather. So once you arrive, you will see this Mount Fitzroy on the right side and Cerro Torre on the left. These uh, landscapes are very particular because they are granite domes that were created inside the earth. And when the Andes range was created by the crash of the land 
coming from the west and the land in the east. When they crashed and the Andes range emerged, all this granite that was inside the earth came out in the shape of these mountains. So we have these huge granite domes that nowadays look like this. At the beginning, when they were buried, probably they were like granite bubbles, huge granite bubbles that with all this breaking and emerging from the earth, they broke and they ended with this shape. This is El Chalten town. El Chalten is a very small town. It is a very interesting town. It is one of the youngest towns in Argentina. It was founded in 1984 during a political conflict with Chile. Today, it is less than 2,000 inhabitants. And it is a very small town that it has less than 2,000 inhabitants during all year round, but it grows a lot during summer with a lot of workers coming and a lot of tourists every day coming to see the mountains. So if you come in summer, it will look like a bigger town, but it isn't. At the beginning, it was settlement of people living here, growing uh, sheep and, and just living in the countryside. And the first settlers were Danish and they came in the 20s. This is El Chalten with the landscape on the background. This is the view from Chalten to the east. I want to tell you about the difference between the west and the east in Patagonia. If you see this picture, this is Mount Pyramid on the east and it is almost like a desert. Other picture, this is Mount Fitzroy to the west of Ch from Chalten, and it is full of glaciers and forests and a lot of greener areas. And we have something in Argentina, well, in South America, that is a precipitation gradient from west to the east. The main uh, winds here come from the west. They bring a lot of rain from the Pacific Ocean. And when this humidity crashes into the Andes range, it starts pouring all the water down. The majority of this humidity falls into the higher areas of the Patagonic ice field, creating these glaciers. Then the only humidity that makes it through the mountains creates all the forest lands that we see western to the town. And then on the eastern parts, we have deserts because no moisture makes it so far from to the east. And so we have these desert lands called estepas. Now we will talk a little bit about hiking in El Chalten area. Once you arrive to El Chalten, you can find accommodation, you can rent gear. There are many restaurants. It is a small town, but it is a town that lives mainly, 99% lives from tourism. So it is very well developed to receive people and, and it has all the services you can look for. Now we will talk about hiking from El Chalten. Once you are in El Chalten, you can do many hikes. But what mainly, what the majority of people want to do is getting the closest possible to Fitzroy Mountain and to Cerro Torre Mountain and see the best close-up possible. So this is one of the hikes that you have to do if you want to do that. Hiking to Fitzroy and Cerro Torre Base Camps. From El Chalten, you can hike to Laguna de los Tres here in the center of the picture. You have a campsite down there called Juan Senot Campsite, or what we call here Camp One. And you can also hike to Laguna Torre. There is a place called Maestri Viewpoint, which is very close to Cerro Torre here. There we have another campsite called the Agostini Campsite. And also we have another hike that is called Loma del Pie de Tumbado, a very beautiful hike with a panoramic view of all the mountain ranges. This is our trail to Fitzroy Mountain. You know, Fitzroy is the name that was given by Perito Moreno, a local biologist, naturalist in the 1920s. He named this mountain after the captain of the Beagle ship. The Beagle was the ship in which Charles Darwin did his explorations of these parts of the world while he was developing his theories on evolution. And so this biologist, naturalist of Argentina that was very fond of Darwin, he loved Charles Darwin and all his story. But the natives, many years before, natives used to call this mountain Cerro Chalten, Chalten Mountain. Chalten means smoky mountain. And they used to name it that way because they thought that the mountain was a volcano and that it had some smoke coming out from its center, which is not true. This mountain is not a volcano, but they thought that because of the clouds that usually are created in the mountain because it is very high and all this moisture crashes into the mountain and when the air goes up, 
all the cloud is created near its top. So the real native name for the mountain is Chalten. So this is a picture of the trail on the way to Fitzroy. This is an easy hike, Fitzroy Base Camp and Laguna de los Tres. It's uh, 10 kilometers far from El Chalten town. This is a hike that is good for anybody who has a young attitude and wants to hike light. And you can do this hike with a day pack and visit this place up in the mountain that is amazing. This is Laguna de los Tres. It's the closest you can get to Mount Fitzroy hiking. After Laguna de los Tres, if you want to go any closer to the mountain, you have to hike this glacier that is called Glacier of the Three. And it is called Glacier of the Three after the three first climbers that attempted Mount Fitzroy. These were Italian climbers and they came in the 1920s, 1930s. This mountain was first climbed in 1953 by a French party whose leader was Lionel Terre, who was the first man climbing the first 8,000 meter peak in 1952. They climbed Annapurna in 1952, and a year after that, they came to Patagonia and they climbed Mount Fitzroy after seeing a lot of pictures of Padre Luis Alberto Maria Agostini who was a priest that published the first pictures of these mountains in Europe, and he created a mess of climbers trying to come climb the mountain. This is something that you can do on a day hike from Chalten town. But also, it is so beautiful that it is usually crowded. You can see it here. There are lots of people there. So what we do know is that if you do the right logistics, you can come here and visit this place far from the crowds and, and in another timing from the regular crowds that come here. Here we have the view from Laguna de los Tres to the east. Here you can see Viedma Lake on the far background, and you can see these small lakes here, which are called Madre and Hija lakes. And you can see how the trees there are red, lose their, their leaves during autumn. So this probably is a picture that I took at the end of, of the season. We usually like spending a night on the camera. We have these kind of facilities, dining tents, which we like because that allows us to hike very light and bring the less weight possible to make this hike possible to anybody who wants to visit the place without any hard struggle with the weight. Here we have another picture. This is Glaciar Piedras Blancas and Laguna Sucia. This is something that you can do from campground on day two if you hike from one place to the other. You can hike from this campground through these lakes, which are the ones that I showed you before, and go to the Cerro Torre Valley, which is a little bit southern from Fitzroy and come closer to Cerro Torre. This is amazing, an amazing picture. That is a day hike that going from Fitzroy campground to Cerro Torre campground is a day hike. And you can spend a night here close to this lake, which is usually very crowded. And as it is very crowded, what we like doing is after this hike and after arriving this place, we like spending a night on this campground. On the next day, we can go up to this viewpoint, which is called Maestri viewpoint, that is amazing and gives us a close up to Mount Torre, to Cerro Torre. You know, Cerro Torre is an iconic mountain. It is a mountain that was first climbed in 1974, which is really late for a first climb in the world, you know? There's been attempts to climb it since the 50s, and there are also climbers that claim having climbed it before, but can't show their telling the truth. So the first party, the first Italian party climbing it, did it in 1974, and they have to wait. The ice climbing gear developed enough so that they could do this type of technical climb for the first time. They did it in 1974, and still today, it is one of the most difficult climbs of the world. Very little people do this climb every year. There we have another picture of the mountain. You can see that all the moisture coming from the west, which is the left here, crashes into the mountain and leaves all this white stripe attached to the mountain. It is a stripe of, it looks like snow, but we call it a rime. It is a very soft snow attached to the granite, which you can, if you want to climb it with ice peaks, you can't because you it won't hold. So it is very difficult to climb and the conditions have to be perfect to do this. Summit. And here we are hiking down, we are hiking out from the valley back to El Chalten. Loma del Pie de Tumbado, it is an, a hike that we usually do it as an optional day. 
after spending two nights in the mountains, we come back to town. And if someone wants to hike one more day, we usually come here to Loma del Pie Tumbado. It is 10 kilometers from El Chalten and 10 kilometers back. And it is a thousand meters of elevation gain from town. The reward of this hike is receiving this view, which is for me one of the most beautiful views of the National Park. Because from one viewpoint, you can see Fitzroy Mountain and Cerro Toro. So this is something that very little people do because majority of people stay closer to Fitzroy Base Camp and to Cerro Torre Base Camp. This is like a hidden trail for the majority of tourists. It is something that is really worth doing if you come to El Chaten. This hike, Fitzroy and Cerro Torre Base Camp hike, is a hike that anybody could do if they visit El Chaltén. And here I will show you another hike that is called the Wool Secret, which is a hike that is more committing. It is a hike that is for people that are willing to have an, an adventure, perhaps of another sort, an adventure in which you have to pack your own weight, you have to bring a backpack with 20 kilos, hike for, for five days, hike into lands that are very isolated, far from people, and really get in touch with the real Patagonia. Patagonia is a place where you can travel for two days by car without seeing anybody. You can hike for a week without seeing anybody. And when you hike the main trails, like the ones I told you before, you will cross a lot of people because there are lots of tourists willing to see that, that, those views. And when you hike, you will probably be alone or, or you will cross very little people in the trail because it is a more demanding trail and let's say a hidden option to hike. Wemul, the name of this hike is after this deer, the Wemul deer, which is a local deer. It is an endangered species and it is very friendly. Perhaps that's why it is endangered. We usually see it often near the trails. This hike is a four-day hike. We usually like to do it in, a, in five days. Instead of doing it into three campgrounds, we do it with four campgrounds because we like spending a whole day hiking into a glacier. But if you do it by your own, you can do it in three days. This hike is a hike that we advise to do with a guide because it can be demanding, committing, and it demands some travel experience. So it is a hike that begins in El Chalten. You start right from your hotel. You hike for a day into this valley, up to the end of the valley where a glacier is. So you have to bring some wading shoes or crocs or sandals or something of the sort. And you have to use these kind of backpacks with some weight. I mean, you are carrying your foam mattress, your sleeping bag, a tent, your personal things, and also your food. So you need a big backpack and you need to be able to carry this backpack. Yeah, we have some people crossing this river. A picture showing a typical campground on the first day on Toro Valley with me and a friend of mine cooking for our clients. This is day two. You start with a, an early waiting. It, it can be cold. And day two highlight is hiking on Tunnel Glacier, which is something that usually people don't do. They just pass by the glacier and go straight to the second campground. And I think it is a shame because you pass by this beautiful place and you skip it. So, so I started offering this product with an extra day hiking into the glacier and visiting the crevasses, the rivers inside the ice, the ice caves, and many, many features of the glacier that you have to visit because you're so close that it would be a shame not to do. This glacier on the right is Tunnel Inferior Glacier, the glacier we usually hike with this ice trek. There we hike up to this mountain pass called the Viento Pass. It is called the Windy Pass. Wind here can be very, very strong. I mean, if you have a storm or if you have big wind gusts, sometimes you can't walk, you know? This, sometimes here the wind can put you in the ground. Sometimes you have to squat and stay there still because the winds can be so strong that they can make you unable to walk. After crossing this mountain pass, we have these views to the ice fields. When we circuit, it's a hike that allows you to get the closest possible to the Patagonic ice field that you can by hiking. If you want to get any closer, you have to do a glacial traverse and enter the ice field. So here we have um, a hike that takes you next to the glacier. Here we have the ice field 
and the beginning of, uh, of the Viedma Glacier on the left. This Viedma Glacier is flowing down to Viedma Lake, the lake I told you before. These people hiking on this third day and then hiking up to Wemul Pass, which is another mountain pass to come back from the side of the ice field back to the east part of the National Park and hiking down to Tunnel Bay, which is our third campground. Here we have some technical steps that usually we will, we will be laid with, with a rope. And we arrived to this amazing place that is called the Tempanos Bay, which means the Iceberg Bay. These icebergs are all parts of Vietnam Glacier that break and the wind brings them to this bay. And this is sunset on the last day of this hike, which is for me the most beautiful view of this hike. Seeing all these icebergs hit by the first light in the morning is amazing. And this is our last day of Wemul Circuit, coming back from the mountains into the desert again, back to the east and crossing at some Tyrolean Traverse, a fixed line that you have to cross to cross this river that here it gets very big and you can't wait it. You have to cross it through a fixed line. Through 57 hours, we offer two main hikes, two main products. We offer the Fitzroy and Cerro Torre Base Camp hike with everything included and with the campgrounds and the tents and the food and everything included so that you can hike light. And we offer the Wemul Circuit in a five-day tour with a nice trek. So if you come here and you want to do these long hikes, you need to bring a 50-liter backpack and you need to bring three good layers of clothes. You need to bring a warm puffy jacket, like a down feather jacket for sure, and you need to bring very good waterproof layers, pants and jacket. For me, you need Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is like the standard for waterproof gear. If you come to Patagonia, which is a place that even in summer can get snowy or rainy, you want to have the best waterproof gear possible. And also it gets cold. That's why I'm telling you that you need a down feather jacket. Why? Because if you don't bring the right gear, you can compromise an expedition here. These kind of hikes, long hikes in the mountains, crossing mountain passes, getting into glaciers. If your gear is not good enough, it starts raining and you get wet and you get cold. Bringing the best gear is probably the best advice I can give you for these kind of hikes in Patagonia. And also you need a very good sleeping bag, your own foam mattress, your own tent, and all the things that we are telling you here on this list. You also need mountain shoes or boots, mainly boots, because boots will cover your ankle and they will protect you from any rocks coming and hitting you, which is not a, a real problem in the other hikes. The other hikes are shorter, the trails are uh, well marked, are very, very well marked, and you don't need to bring a very big backpack, you don't need a sleeping bag, you don't need a tent, you don't need a mattress because everything is included on this hike. And you still need a puffy jacket for not being cold when we stop in the, in the viewpoint, so when you stop on the ground. And you definitely need good waterproof gear because either you do a long or a short hike, rain will hit you the same if it comes. You don't need to be an extreme hiker for coming to one of these trips. We um, like offering hikes for every type of hikers. So if you are not ex an extreme hiker, there is a hike for you. Like the hike, the base camp hike is something that we've done with people with very little experience or with no experience. We also did it with people older than 70 years old. We did it with children around 80 years old. So it is something that is doable. In, by families, uh, it is doable by many kinds of people. You don't need to be an extreme hiker for the base camp treks. If you want to do the Wemul loop, if you are used to hike, but you don't want to carry any weight because that is your issue, you can always hire a porter and do it without any weight. For example, I did the Wemul circuit with the ice trek with a couple that was 75 years old. They were very experienced hikers. They had a very well, a very good physical level. They were in shape, but they didn't want to carry any gear. So they hired a porter and they still did it. Then the other question is if you need any technical mountain gear to come to Patagonia. You don't need any. And if you happen to need any, you can rent it in El Chalten. Don't let this issue stop you from coming to El Chalten. You can come and if you want to do a hike, like the base camp, you don't need any technical mountain gear. And if you do want to do a hike like the Wemul circuit, then all the technical mountain gear 
harness, crampons is already included and you don't have to rent it. If the weather stops us, always there is a plan B and there are many circuits and many hikes we can do in the area. I'm a committed guide. I love accomplishing the goals I set with a group and I love pushing through storms and pushing through wind and pushing to accomplish the goals we have. Sometimes the weather can be very, very bad and safety can be an issue. So if safety is an issue, we usually do plan B. There are many options for hiking and mountaineering, except for these ones. You can do a lot of things. And if you want to do something different, or if you want to do this and something else, please contact us because there are many options around in town. And also I want to tell you this, there is a situation in Argentina regarding money exchange. These days we have different exchange rates. If you go to a bank or if you exchange, for example, in a hotel, it has to do with government rules and taxes and and things. But what we usually advise people these days is something that we usually don't advise travelers. The best thing you can do these days is coming to Argentina with cash. If you use your credit card, you will be given the official exchange rate that is half what you will be given if you bring cash and you exchange it through your hotel, through uh, car rentals, through your local guides. I mean, there are many ways you can exchange cash into double what you will be paid if you use your credit card. So here we have what we are offering these days. We have already three dates for December, January, and February for both hikes. There are still some places on each of our dates. This is what is included and what is not included on the hikes. These are our prices and you can find all this information in 57 hours website. I want to tell everybody that I'm very thankful that you came to this webinar and I'm open to receive any questions you have on my email. You can reach me through 57 hours. Even if you don't book an experience with us, you can reach me and I will be, I think that I I really enjoy sharing my place with people. So if you're planning a trip and you need any advice, you can reach me and I will help you in everything I can. Bye-bye.